Hello, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Jennifer Broom. The Ensemble Theater, located in the heart of Midtown, is the largest African-American professional theater company in the United States. Now, it is known for bringing all sorts of amazing productions and plays. Yeah, and that includes what is currently running Pearl Clegg's romantic comedy, The Nakarema Society. That is American spelled backwards, in case you were wondering. The romantic comedy introduces, introduces you to six elegant African-American American socialites as they make their debut with the Nakarema Society of Montgomery, Alabama. And here to perform a scene from the play is Candace DeMeza as Gracie and Derek Brent as Bobby. Take it away. You doing up so late? I'm training myself to write between the hours of 3 and 7 a.m. That way if I do have to get a full-time job, I can get four hours of writing time in before I have to go to work. What are you doing up so early? I'm contemplating the fact that I'm a complete idiot. Hmm. So what else is new? Would you like some coffee? No, I need some advice. From me? About what? What are you always talking about? What are you always writing about? Love, right? So here's the question. Do you believe in it? As much as I believe the sun is going to rise in the east and set in the west, it is practically all I do believe in unequivocally. Would you risk everything on account of it. It is not a real love story if you do not risk everything. Even money. Especially money. All right, that settles it then. Mm -hmm. Gracie, I can't escort you to the ball on Saturday. Oh, yeah, right. Our grandmothers would compete for their right to kill you. Look, I've already got a friend lined up for you, and he can wear my tails, and plus both his grandfathers are in the boule, so he can waltz his tail off. Bobby, you're not kidding, are you? Last summer, I got to know a woman who brought out the best in me. A woman who makes me think better, laugh louder. I'm not with her. It feels like one of my arms is missing. Bobby, you, you were that's what I'm trying to tell you, kid. Oh, I got it bad. Oh, oh, that's so romantic. Oh, okay, okay, go on. Well, I promised her I'd spend Christmas break in mm -hmm. Mississippi volunteering at this clinic with her. We've been talking about it for weeks. I forgot all about the Centennial Ball. How could you be expected to remember? It only comes around once every hundred years. When I told my grandmother I was going to Mississippi, mm -hmm. she read me the ride act. She said that if I didn't cancel my plan, she'd write me out of her will once and for all. Oh, she would never do that. Yes, she would. So mm -hmm. I called my friend and I told her that I couldn't go with her. Her, that I'm not the man that she thought I was, even though that's the man that I want to be, and I hung up. Wait, you hung up on the woman you love? I told you I was an idiot. I'm going to make a few mistakes. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? Been driving around all night trying to decide. First, I tried to think about all that money, oh, but Bobby. I kept getting distracted thinking about the way this girl laughs. Then I tried thinking about losing all that money, but I kept remembering the way she smells. So then I tried thinking thinking what my life would be like without all that money in it. And all I could think about was what my life would be like without her in it. So I'm going to Mississippi okay. and I'm going to beg her forgiveness as if I was all five of the temptations <laughs> rolled into one. And then I'm going to ask her if she would do me the great honor of becoming my wife. Go. Oh. So what do you think? I think it's wonderful, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but as far as love stories go, you've got a big problem. You don't think she'll forgive me? Oh no, she'll forgive you. I will never forgive you. Yeah. You leave a note for your grandmother and go slink up in the middle of the night? I hadn't exactly said it on slink and I was just hoping to avoid another confrontation. You said you wanted to risk everything. Well, if you are mm -hmm. serious, you have to stand up to your grandmother. You can break character now. Yeah. 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 We also want to introduce uh, Eileen Morris, who's the artistic director down at the ensemble. Hi. Welcome to the Thank show, guys. Thank you so guys. much for having us. We nicely, appreciate it. Nicely done. Have you ever done a scene like that in the mall before? <laughs> I did not say well, that. Very possibly. You have. Very possibly. So Eileen, tell us about the Ensemble Theater Company, because you guys have been around since 1976, and right. I understand the late founder actually ran it out of the trunk, trunk of, of his car. car. I know, wow. I know. It's a, do that. it's a wonderful story because of the fact that he was committed to making sure that African Americans could practice and perfect their craft. But the Ensemble Theater is the oldest African American theater company. We're 40 years old this year. Wow. So we're having a one. Thank you so much. We're having a wonderful time just celebrating the art, doing the work that we were known to do, and continuing to make a difference in the Houston community. So Candace and Derek, you gave us just a little snippet of the play. Tell us a little bit more about it. 
Uh, I think the biggest thing is the year and time that it takes place in 1964. Pearl Clegg, the playwright, wanted yeah. to be sure that, you know, during that torrential time, during civil rights and all, that people still had time to fall in love and, and have troubles and scandals and crises and things of their own, and life still spun. So, uh, yes. And why do you two, as performers, why do you think it's critical that the tradition of having a specific theater for African-American material is still important, but also relevant today? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of times um, in the arts, especially in Hollywood, we see that for, for actors of color to be cast, it has to be a conscious choice. And so for a lot of us, we're not able to perfect our craft. So having something like the Ensemble Theater gives us a, a forum and a place and a place to uh, promote the narrative of art and our unique stories through a, our unique lens as Americans. Well, and you guys are reaching a lot of people too. Eileen, I, I understand you guys reach about 60,000 people every single oh, yeah, year. Because we do a lot of work. Not only do we have our main stage productions, but we actually have touring productions that we go across the city and do. Uh, we'll be going to Winston-Salem this summer, we have a young performers training program for youth ages 6 to 17. So we train young people in the theater uh, to come and to, you know, find their, their, their voice. That's so cool. So it's not just a stage for performers to come oh, and perform. I mean, that's one it's, of the elements. It's training future actors and actresses. That's right. But that's one of the elements. And so the beauty of that is, and that's what Mr. Hawkins wanted to do. He wanted to be able to have a plethora of opportunities for people that are not only of color, but for the universe, really, for the world to be able to see what it is that we're able to to do it. So we appreciate that. Do you know where, specifically talking about this play, do you know where the name came from? That. Well, the playwright said, I don't know specifically, but she wanted to do, she wanted something that was universal. So that's why Nakarima came about. It's not a true society. People ask us that all the time. Does it really exist? But it doesn't. But she wanted something that was universal. And American is universal by saying the Nakarima Society. So Candace and Derek, cool. if people want to come and see you on the stage, tell us about the performance information. Because the show is running now. Are you guys open? Yeah. Running now. It runs um, Thursday, Friday, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. And they can get more information at EnsembleHouston.com. Perfect. And we're seeing some of that information on our screen right now. So the show does run until April 16th. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness, it is already April, folks. I know. <laughs> Can't wait. Well, guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for having us. And sharing your talents with us, and good luck. I hope you continue performing and come back and see us again very soon. Absolutely. Again, that website is EnsembleHouston.com for tickets and more information.